first thing you're gonna want to do is go to the GitHub. So you're gonna go to www.github.com and you are gonna search for Super Slicer, literally. It should come up Super Mario Super Slicer when you start typing that in. So you can just click directly on that. Now, there's two ways to get it. One is the JIT releases page which will have the most recent semi-stable release or you can go to the JIT actions page and then pick your actual uh, OS so I'm on Windows so I go to Windows 64 if I was on Linux I'd go to Ubuntu if I was on Mac I'd go to Mac OS obviously so I want the latest nightly so we don't need dependencies since we're not compiling it. So click nightly win64 in my case. Or so you let that download. Show it in the folder. Open the archive. Extract the files. And now we're going to come in here, open this, select the contents, and cut them or copy them, whatever you want to do. Go into your program files, make a folder called Super Slicer. And paste the contents. Now, now right click and select create shortcut. And when you click it and open it, it's going to start with the configuration wizard. You can choose to make your own custom config for your printer or select your printer. If you're using a um, Trudon 300, I suggest just grabbing a Boron 300 setup. But in my case, I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to go to configuration and help and then show configuration folder. So from that point, go to the Google Drive link that's going to be in the description and you can take my super slicer folder and take the contents and put it into yours and this will give you my configs which will have a 300 and a 400 setup for 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 nozzles for the Trudon but you're still going to have to go in and turn it on to expert mode and you're going to have to set your IP address if you want to do um, direct uploads. Now next is if you want to use it for a different printer go to configuration wizard, go to custom pick which nozzle size you want then if the printer is here great there's a good chance it is unless it's something extremely custom which I'm assuming if it's something extremely custom you most likely are gonna know what to do now from this point on but uh, just to show let's do a CR10 CR10S Pro V2 So pick every nozzle that you own for that printer 
go to next. Next, I mean, you can pick multiple printers too if you have more than one. This is going through all different manufacturers just to show you. By the way, that's pretty cool that it supports a uh, <laughs> resin printer now, which that is if you want to make really nice supports, uh, like how the resin printers do the really nice tree supports, a trick that you can do is make a configuration for the original Prusa and you make the supports for that printer, export the SDL and then and then um select uh, use custom supports um, you know and then export it and then re-slice it so I'll show you exactly what I mean so I'm gonna go to printer and I'm gonna select the original Prusa SL1 and I'm gonna add a design that I was just messing with so it's uh, like a fan duct and Say we want to print this like we were printing on a resin printer. So now we have generated supports that are really, you know, nice supports. So we now export plate as STL including supports bands up so I'm gonna name this supports and now let's go back to our printer and we'll pick the Creality And if you notice, the supports are gone. And it's saying no extrusions on the first layer because it's floating in the layer. So, let's add an STL back in. And now we have custom supports, tree supports basically, that will print really complex objects beautifully. There is a lot of attractions that go on with this, but as you guys have seen, if you're running direct drive, um, the configurations that I use, I have printed lattice structures that come out beautifully. So make sure that you do not turn on supports again, because uh, you'll accidentally double support it, which will be pretty messy. That should get you going with your basic stuff. Um, the only other things are to make sure that you pick your right firmware if you're using a different, uh, you know, board or anything. It's a very overlooked setting. And relative extruder distances stuff like that. If you want to make changes for pressure advance or linear advance, I suggest doing it in your custom G code. So I'll show you what I mean. I set it here so I can have a different setting for every filament. And then set G code offset is how it lifts. Now there are rep rep firmware ones here. This is the set pressure advance or rep rep firmware. Um, PETG, that's baby stepped up 0.2 because PETG likes a little bit of a gap. But basically, this should be a pretty good starter set that has most of the stuff you need. 
and hopefully this was helpful. I'm gonna try to work on a few more videos uh, that go into the width and the extrusion width and flow settings because people are asking about it. Oh, and one very important thing is this setting should almost always be at zero because what it is is a nozzle cannot extrude um, a 0.2 layer in the middle of the air if it does nothing to push on if it's a 0.4 nozzle. So what it does is right now if you see everything looks nice and neat but now we turn around and set this to bridge flow and it's going to make these overhangs as if they were a bridge. Which means that if you were printing a 0.2 layer height it now makes a 0.4 blob along the edge. So that is a very important setting to be set to zero. It really messes a lot of people up on their benches and they don't realize why that brim looks so bad and that's one of the reasons. As you can see, that's now you know, nice and clean again. Uh, another setting to be careful with is overlooping external perimeters is okay, but also for all perimeters that can be a tricky one to be a little careful with. And seam. You always want angle pretty much to be at 100 and travel to be lower, if not zero, especially on the true dunk. We travel so fast, it doesn't matter. You might change the print maybe a minute or two um, at the cost of having a seam in the middle of a wall, which never looks nice. So, I'm, uh, there's some stuff that the Clipper devs are working on, and uh, I'm going to be doing some test prints for them to try to get the smooth time uh, dialed in perfectly for uh, pressure advance. Um, so there should be a nice, you know, boost to uh, seam quality coming in the short future, you know, even more than it already is better than the other firmwares, so that should be pretty exciting. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day, and I'll uh, try to get another one up in a day or two.